So I, I've said this about other songs before. I know I've said it about Outskirts of Grace, but I, I believe truly that um, Runaway Heart is the most personal song I've ever written because um, it's kind of the only song that uh, I personally address like my fears in, and it's the most vulnerable I get in a song. Um, my greatest struggle in my adult life has consistently been walking the fine line between complacency and contentment. And, and when I have what I have, I have a beautiful family, I have a roof over my head, um, I have food on the table, I have all the necessities and, and then some. And there's still this part of me that's always wondering what else is out there um, and always looking for something more. And I believe we're called to contentment and um, I want to be content. I want to be grateful for what I have. At the same time, I don't want to settle for less than I, I deserve or, or, or could get. And, and, and I don't want to settle for an unfulfilled life. And I think we see that a lot um, today. I, I see a lot of complacency in myself and in my family and in my friends and just people I know. It's just, a, a, well, I think, one of the greatest um, issues we have in our culture is complacency and so I really want to fight that it's my greatest fear but I do want contentment and so the song kind of started from that feeling it's a feeling that I deal with every day and sat down one night and, and kind of wrote the first verse you know the um, I'm tired of letting my fears get the best of my freedom I'm tired of letting my nightmares get the best of my dreaming um, tired of wasting Regret on how far I ain't come. I'm tired of wasting my breath on things I ain't done. And, and to me, that was kind of the the foundation of this song. This, I don't want to spend my words or my time or my thoughts on what I don't have. You know, um, I want to focus on the good you know, and what I do have. And so the chorus of the song is kind of like a plea to myself to slow down for the first time in your life, slow down, you know? Um, so the first verse is real kind of um, broken down, you know, just acoustic guitar vocal, just kind of telling that story and setting up the story. And, you know, production wise in the studio, you know, it gets into the chorus and it really, really starts driving a bit more. And it builds with the drums coming in and the bass full on. And it feels like this to me. I think what well, you know, Sal has such a good ear for, you know, making the lyrics and the sounds fit together. And I think what he did really well with this chorus, especially, is like it's a song about a wanderer, about um, this restless kind of spirit. And and the chorus to me feels like windows down, driving down the highway. Um, and that's kind of the character in the story, you know. And so it fits. Um, Sonically, it fits really well with the lyric. You know, the second verse was uh, I sent the song to Charlie Berry and Hunter Mounds to help me with it once I got, you know, a good foundation. In the second verse, they both kind of contributed on. And it was, it was you know, kind of a, a, a part of the story that I wasn't going to tell, but they both kind of went into it and I really liked it. And it's like, you know, kind of this question of like, what have I lost because of this restlessness? Like, you know, in, in the second verse, it's a relationship, you know. Um, thought I'd keep a promise to a faithful heart like you. Leave it to me to go and lose it if there's something to lose. And it's like, what goodbyes have I said or hearts have I broken because I just had to move on to the next thing and I couldn't settle down. I couldn't be content with where I was. And I think it's a really interesting way to take that second verse. And I'm glad they brought it up because I probably would have you know, done kind of a cheap repetition of the first verse or something if they hadn't. So I like that because I think that's, I think the song is a song that a lot of people can relate to the sentiment of. And um, I really like that part of the story, like, you know, losing, losing relationship potentially, um, you know, for, um, to chase something, you know, production wise, um, in the second verse, you know, the song, I think Sal did a really good job. He always does. I think he did a really good job of building the song and kind of keeping it moving. When you have a really lyric-heavy song like Runaway Heart, it's really important in the studio to keep it sonically interesting. And Sal's so great about that. And one of the things that they did in the studio, Nate kind of does this little guitar part. We're in the second verse right here. 
It's kind of like U2, like the edge, delay heavy guitar part. And it's subtle in the mix. When we bring the full band back in, you almost lose that part. But it's still there, it's just kind of ringing and just driving through the second verse and kind of leading to the build in the second chorus where it really comes in, the drums really come in big, the cymbals hit at the top of the chorus. And now we're in it, you know. The harmonies are in, the full drums are in. And that little guitar part, I think, just kind of leads to that and it makes that build natural and organic and, and it's fitting. Um, the bridge of this one, I think, is actually my favorite lyrical moment of the song. The Maybe it's out there, whatever I'm chasing, maybe I'll find it someday. Or maybe I'll spend my whole life waiting for something I missed on the way. And that's, that's the fear. You know, it's like, I kind of live in, in the first two lines of the bridge. You know, maybe it's out there, whatever I'm chasing, maybe I'll find it someday. And so I kind of live in that, like always chasing, because maybe it is out there. From the back half of the bridge, it's like, what if it's not? You know, like, what if you have everything you need and you want already? and you're missing it because you're looking for something that you're not going to find, you know? And so the, the bridge to me is kind of a, it's a convicting lyric, you know, and it's funny I wrote it about myself because I don't like to be convicted, but it is a convicting lyric. And it's big too, you know, production wise. <clears throat> the bridge is big. And it's this big question. It's like the whole question of the song. Like, did you miss it already? Do you already have it? Did you miss it? And then Jacob, who played the bass on this track, he had this idea coming out of the bridge, just like all of a sudden strip it down and get into the really stripped down, vulnerable last chorus. It just stops. And it's just like a loud vocal. And it's simple acoustic guitar, just this real vulnerable moment of like, just trying to slow down, you know. Um, I just want to be okay where I am. And it's probably, that last chorus, that broke down chorus coming out of that bridge is probably about as vulnerable as I've ever been on a record. Trying to slow down